before we get started with the video, remember, go down below, scroll down, I'll wait, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me what you don't like about me, or do like about me. Now let's start the video. Welcome back to the videos, guys. Today, we are going to be not really working on the Subaru, more of a, uh, a prep. I'm going on a little bit of a road trip this upcoming month. Uh, really, it's about a week away now. Um, I'm going out of town for work. That being said, you guys probably won't get consistent videos for another month. I'll be out of town, so I won't really have the shop space to work with. I'll uh, I'll get as creative as I can while I'm out there and try and film something for at least a couple days. Um, today we are focusing on prepping the STI for the road trip. So we've got a couple things we need to do. We need to clean the interior. For that, I'm going to show you guys how to clean suede seats. If you don't know, the STI comes with a suede blue seat so i'm going to show you how to clean those the correct way and keep from damaging the alcantara slash suede whatever it may be on top of that we have a little bit of a noise coming from the engine bay i do believe it is the ac pulley so i'm going to uh take off that belt and just see if i can diagnose it and then I will be showing you how to check certain fluid levels in your car. That way you know if they're right, if they need to be topped off, or if you need to flush them. Uh, the condition of the fluid is very important as well. With that being said, we'll go ahead and hop into it. We'll start on the seats and work our way from there. So you're going to need a rag, a vacuum, and some sort of fabric cleaner you can get a suede or alcantara specific cleaner this is just what i have in the shop so that's what we're going to be using today and you're going to want to start in more of like a a square so you only want to do so much at a time to keep from soaking the seat because if you soak the seat you'll damage the fibers and they'll get matted down so we're going to come in here with our fabric cleaner and just kind of mist it over after you have misted the section you want to work on take a detailing brush you can pick these up at your auto part store or if you have a brand you like you want something a little bit fancier you can order them online take your brush give it a couple spritz don't soak this you just want it to be wet with the product that you're using and then we are going to work it into the alcantara slash suede so i did that section just really quick um, you can see, maybe you can't on camera, this is now clean, um, it is damp, you don't want to soak it, like I said, damp is okay, we're going to come over with a vacuum, now that I've done this section and got a feel for how the product works on the seat, I'm going to come over to this area over here, and just go through that and show you exactly what I'm doing. So I've just lightly misted it. We're going to take our brush now and just kind of work it in light circles. You don't want to be too heavy on this, but you do want to work it into the, the fabric or the suede that you're working with and just kind of move the product around. You want it to, to work for you. So I'm going to finish up here and then I'll show you how we kind of absorb some of that product after we are done. Now that we have worked the product into the suede or the Alcantara, whatever you may be working on, we can just lightly go through and kind of, kind of make a scooping motion. You don't want to push down and rub into it because you do not want to damage those fibers. So you're just gonna kind of scoop lightly kind of wipe off as much of the excess that you can and just kind of bring it all to the surface while trying your best not to mat down the fibers. I'm going to go ahead and do both of the front seats 
Then I'm going to take the rear seats out and adjust the coilover dampening because it is a little stiff for a road trip. Be a little bit rough on my back. And then we will get started on checking fluids and making sure everything else with the car is good to go. Sorry guys, sometimes I have to uh, walk myself through what I'm doing because I will get carried away and lose, lose track of what's going on. So if I repeat myself a little bit in my videos, that's kind of what's happening. I'm just reminding myself of what I'm doing and what I'm doing next. So, so I've just finished up the driver's seat. Uh, one thing I wanted to say really quickly, lean the seat all the way back. The more area you have to work with and the easier it is on yourself, the easier the job will be, um, which should be kind of self-explanatory. But don't be afraid to work with Suede and Alcantara. It is a little bit different, but you can still clean it. You can still do it yourself and still have it come out good. Um, obviously, if you use more expensive products and you practice with it more, you're going to get a better result. So the first time may be a little scary. Just don't use too much product and don't be too forceful with it. You'll be good to go. So I've removed the rear back seat and adjusted the dampening of the coilovers for the rear. I'm going to go ahead and clean the back seats while they're out. It'll make it a lot easier and I don't have to bend over and break my back. And Miss Justice over here is making TikToks for the baby. I'm making baby TikToks. So I've got these seats ready to go. They are just drying up. Like I said, I adjusted the dampening a couple clicks down. That way, on our road trip, it'll be a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer on my back, not so harsh. Um, I'll do a review on these coilovers once I'm down there. I, uh, I've got some thoughts on them. Not bad thoughts. Not all positive thoughts. I've just got some thoughts on them. And I will, uh, I'll shoot that video while I'm down there so you guys have some content. We are going to go ahead, put the seats back in now, and then we will go through checking your fluids and any sort of maintenance checks you're going to want to do before you go on a long road trip, just to make sure your vehicle's doing well and that it is prepared for, you know, I'm doing probably about a thousand miles one way. So with the driving that I'm doing there, it'd probably be a total of 3000 miles on the vehicle. Make sure it's ready for that. So I found the source of the high pitch whine. I don't think it's the belt. I think the AC compressor itself is going out. Um, I'll flip you around. As you can see, that belt has uh, definitely seen better days and is in need of replacement. But the belt itself, I don't think would uh, cause an intermittent whine. I mean, it might. We could go ahead and replace it, see if it does anything. But I'm fairly certain that that AC compressor is uh, on its way out, which sucks. And another thing, after we put the back seat in, the fuel level reads empty. So I'm really hoping I didn't pinch something that goes to the fuel level sender because that would suck. So I'm gonna go fit, whoop. I'm gonna go fill this up with gas we're going to come back and then I'm going to show you how to go over all of your fluid levels. So now that we filled the car up, we are going to check the fluids. So we'll start with power steering. As you can see, that's a little low. So we'll go ahead and top that off. And then you will want to check your coolant. I'm not going to do that right now because the engine is hot and at operating temperature. Then we'll come over check our oil I'll grab a rag we'll wipe that off and make sure she's good to go I got to do an oil change anyways but uh, good practice just checking it and on an STI and WRX you have a dipstick in the back really can't see it with the intercooler and the heat shield on if you take the intercooler off you have access to it but you have a dipstick for your manual trans in the uh, the back of the engine bay there. Most manual cars won't have a dipstick on their trans, and then most automatic cars do. Some 
new new cars, new models, they'll have a sealed unit that you're actually not able to check via a dipstick. Like the GTI, you're not able to check with a dipstick. It's kind of a self-bleeding system when you fill it up. And then after that, you just hope you don't leak anything. So I've wiped the dipstick clean. Now we can go ahead and pull it back out and see where our oil level is at. Right there in close to the middle. A little bit less than I would like. But if you know anything about Subarus, they tend to burn through oil. Uh, not uncommon on these cars, this platform. So if I weren't doing an oil change here soon, I'd probably top that off we'd be ready to go. Um, I'll be doing that here in the next week because it's about time for that anyways. So we'll go ahead and get that done. I do have to find some ATF because I thought we had some and we are out. And then I'm gonna turn you around and show you some places, at least on this car, you can check your coolant levels. So on the STI, we have this. I would use it for more of a bleeder or if you're topping it off, that's a great place. Here is your radiator. This is a great place to pull the cap off and check, see how much you have. If this looks really low or you can't see any at all, it's a bad sign. And then you have your coolant overflow or your expansion. And you can see in there that we're about halfway, about halfway up the bottle. So that's good to go. Um, just close that back and then we'll check our brakes and our clutch. Those are going to be on the back of against the firewall. Some cars like the Mark six GTI use one single reservoir for the clutch and the brake right here. We'll just take this off and we can actually look in there with the, if we pull the screen out. So with that screen out of the way, we can see that plunger and that plunger sits dead even with the bottom of it. And we can also come down here and look at the level there. So that is also good to go. The fluid is starting to get a little bit darker. You should change it once every few years or so, or there's a mileage rating as well that you can go off of. And uh, that's mainly because water water vapor and, and such will get into the fluid and it breaks it down over time. Then it gets dark and dirty along with, you know, moving parts in your brake system and your clutch system as well. So that's always a good idea. If you get an older car, you can go ahead and flush the brake system, get nice new fluid in there, and then it's something you don't have to worry about. One more quick thing you can check. These have just re been replaced, so I know they're good, is your wiper blades. Go ahead, rub your finger along the edge of that. If you can feel any sort of nicks or buildup or any sort of contamination on it, go ahead and wipe it off. If the blade itself is nicked, like I said, or you've got cuts in the blade, go ahead and replace them. It'll, it'll make life a lot easier when you uh, get into some inclement weather. Kind of like we're having right now. It is snowing outside. We are in Utah, if you guys didn't know, so we get uh, quite a bit of snow. We've gotten a lot this year. Anyways, that's where I'm going to leave off today's video. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. If you think I missed something, by all means, drop a comment below. Let me know, and I'll give you a shout out in the next video. That being said, I will see you guys, hopefully not in a month. Hopefully I uh, can get creative while I'm out there and we can keep uploading some content for you guys and uh, make sure that that's good to go. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.